Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of BBFOhio.com as we begin our study of Colossians chapter 1 verse 14 titled, Through His Blood. There isn't much preaching on the blood of Jesus among evangelical churches these days. Few contemporary Christian songs mention it. The old hymns are being edited to remove the blood and new Bible versions deleted from this text as we will see in our study. But without the blood of Jesus, there is no salvation. If you have any questions, comments, or prayer requests, please send those by email to bbbfohio at yahoo.com or send them by U.S. Postal to P.O. Box 662, Worthington, Ohio, 43085. And now we begin our study of Colossians chapter 1, verse 14, titled, Through His Blood. This is part one. Update. We're going to be in Colossians 1 if you want to open your Bibles there. Colossians 1, but uh, I want to address something. I'm always telling you not to believe what you see on the news. Um, not that everything they say is a lie, but you just have to test everything they say. Uh, they're, they're really, uh, news media today is worse than the communists. Because Reagan used to, Reagan used to say about the communists, trust but, ver but verify. With well, the news media, you don't trust anything. You verify everything. You don't trust anything. And we've shown how all these local news, they're all scripted, whether you're in Indianapolis, Houston, Columbus, LA, don't matter, they're all reading the same script. And I just wanna preface that because I'm not making this personal about the reporter you're gonna see. Um, it's not about her, it's about the people she works for. But uh, we call this a, a, a outhouse dis discussion because this is something outside of the church. But I want you to listen because this is also for you, because I'm just going to be honest, a lot of Christians have a real tr problem listening. And uh, they, they, you, you say something or I'll show something or whatever, and then I'll get responses. And sometimes it's from people here. Sometimes it's on the line, I'll get an email. And my response is simply, that's not what it said. And I can't answer for something I don't say. And I can't answer for some anything I put up here. If you won't take what it says and you twist it all up in your head, there's no, I can't do anything about that. And what happens is on the news media, they'll make a report and Christians, they, they don't listen. So they don't realize they're being programmed. Isn't it fitting? that whenever I say something happens and they break away and then they go back and they say, now back to our regularly scheduled programming. Because you're being programmed. All the scripts for your TV shows, people are writing those and purposely putting in an agenda. Just this morning there's some show on, I think it's ABC, where they purposely never show a Muslim terrorist. Even though better than 90% of all terrorism is Muslim. So what do they do? They throw a bunch of Hindus in there, make it a Hindu terrorist uh, show. And so then the Hindus are like, what, you know, what gives? You know, the, the, that's not going to happen in this circumstance. So ABC apologizes. They're not really sorry. They're sorry you're offended. <laughs> There's a difference. So listen real close here. Yeah, sorry they got caught. Listen real close. Now well, you can't hear it, then you're not going to be able to listen. Let's try it again. Developing now a narrow focused decision by the Supreme Court when it comes to religious rights. Justices ruled the Colorado Civil Rights Commission violated the baker's religious rights when they forced him to bake a cake for a same sex wedding. All right, what was, what was wrong with that? Huh? Well, they were trying to force him to bake a cake, but what's wrong with what she said? Huh? Well, yeah. They, what that, in her defense, or the script writer's defense, it was a narrow decision in the sense that they were very narrow in their application. It wasn't narrow in the sense of it being like six to three, but, or seven to three, but it was, it was narrow in the scope. That's what, sh they should have said narrow in its scope. So I'm not gonna make a big deal about that, but that's good here. 
uh, listening because online, if you saw the headlines, that's the way they posted it. They said, Supreme Court narrowly, blah, blah, blah. No, it was not a narrow uh, victory, but it was a narrow in scope. And that's my point, actually. You'll get, you'll, I'll get to in a second. So let's listen to it again. Developing now a very focused decision by the Supreme Court when it comes to religious rights. Justices ruled the Colorado Civil Rights Commission violated the Baker's religious rights when they forced him to bake a cake for a same-sex wedding. Okay, now narrow focus. Do you hear that? Don't th overthink it. It's not that deep. No, they didn't. They, they weren't. They weren't. They were, the issue wasn't him baking a cake. Now listen, huh? That's the point, right there. He said he'd bake him a cake. He just wouldn't make it with two men getting married on top of it. See that news media wants to paint this as though that guy's a bigot who wouldn't bake a cake for queers. And he told them, I'll bake your cake, but you'll have to decorate it yourself. That, and the reason why Christians don't understand is because of that. Christians get their news from the ungodly, and we don't think, so we don't realize they're misrepresenting the, rea the real issue. The real issue was he wouldn't put two men on top of it. And so they're totally misrepresenting it. And so people think Christians are out there saying, well, if you're a homo, I'm not going to bake a cake for you. No one's ever said that. They'd go out of business. He knows better. He's a businessman. What he won't do is decorate it in a way that celebrates homos being married. Now listen, it goes on a little bit. Justices did not rule on the bigger issue, whether business can be used to serve gay people. That's total fiction. They're making that up. It was, they didn't rule on that because it was never an issue. The news media is trying to make Christians look like they're a bunch of bigots who say, I won't make a cake for someone because they happen to be gay. And that was never the issue. And the issue is and still will be. I say it again. Homos come through that door. We've had them. And uh, on one occasion he left before, you know, five minutes into the study. And I didn't preach at, at the person, I'll say, but uh, she realized that she was, she or he, whatever it was, realized that, that you, I think they expected to come in here and we were going to have God hates fags on the walls or something, because that's the way the media is painting. Anybody who stands against that sin, they want you to be Westboro Baptist. And we're not Westboro Baptist. And, but we do say this, God hates your sin. Well, what, just homo? No, I didn't say that. God hates your sin. I don't care what it is. God hates your sin. Your sin put Jesus on the cross. So whatever your sin is, don't walk through those doors and ask me to accommodate it and to not preach against it because you're going to be sorely displeased. We will stand against sin. I don't care what sin it is. And we're going to preach the truth. Period. Whether it's about sin or anything else. And so... The ACLU have been getting calls all day from cities across the state which have laws protecting gay rights. And mm -hmm. we want to know, what does this mean? Does this change the enforceability of that ordinance? And it does not. It is still fully enforceable. There will be pop-up events tonight across the state near Columbus. That's happening at 530 at old restaurants on Parsons Avenue. You know, you know why ACLU and all these organizations are getting phone calls? Because the news media is malpractice. Because the news media painted it up falsely, people are like, "What? Cold for what in the world?" You know, uh, that's it's just pathetic, and that's why I tell you over and over and over: you watch the news. If you're not questioning what they're saying and you're not testing it, then you're being brainwashed. Mark, now, my friend said it all. Gene, I don't know if you remember him. Uh, he said it all. He said it's the few media. It's what few they want. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Exactly what it is. They have an agenda for a one world government. Amen. And so I'm just telling you, that's the way you have to live. And that's why, that's why we've got empty pews here this morning, by the way. Because you can go to the other churches, almost all of them, 
And I wish I, I, wish I couldn't uh, say that, but I, I, if I'm going to be honest with you, I'm going to tell you that. Almost all the churches in Franklin County this morning, you'll go in there and you'll get a sermonette. You'll get something like, you know, microwave popcorn in a spiritual sense. They aren't going to tell you anything about what's going on in the world. They're not going to confront you with any of this stuff. And, and let me tell you, that's, uh, we are in perilous times. Perilous times have come. And I, and I get this way, I'll tell you, be honest with you, I get this way whenever I go online and I visit the church websites of churches in Franklin County. And I see the mush and the, the lack of Bible teaching, the lack of taking a stand for anything that matters. It's just disgusting. And I'm a sinner saved by grace, and it makes me sick. I can't imagine what a holy God thinks looking at that. It's all about you. Come in, we'll make you feel at home. Everyone's welcome. And all. Well, of course, everybody's welcome, but you're welcome to come in here and have your toes stepped on if you're not right with God. <laughs> Amen. All right, let's get into this. Uh, Colossians 1, 13, 14. We're going to see some more of this on a different subject of what we're just talking about, though. Through His blood, I want you to get those three words pounded in your head because you're going to see something in a minute. Colossians chapter 1, verses 13 through 14. And we left off with verse 12. And uh, actually, I'm going to go ahead and have you read just verses 13 and 14. And then we'll put it in context. But let's go ahead and read, if you're there. Verses 13 and 14. Read that with me. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of His dear Son, in whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Now, uh, we're going to open with a word of prayer and then jump into the text. Father, we just want to ask you to help us in our study to keep it real. Lord, that anyone listening, whether they're here or they're listening online or later on listening on the radio or the internet, that they won't just be going through the motions. They'll really be listening, wanting to learn. But Lord, that we are in the days that you predicted, the perilous times where men are lovers of their own selves. And we just ask, Lord, that if it takes something terrible, if it takes some horrible thing, if it takes some massive earthquakes, if Yellowstone and Madrid and the San Andreas have to break in order to wake the people in this country up, and I mean Christians as well as the unsaved. Lord, whatever it takes, we pray for you to do it. And Lord, uh, if we're real Bible believers, then we should be preparing, preparing ourselves uh, for what's to come. It's going to get rough, and it's going to get ugly, and it could start very soon. So, you know, we just pray, Lord, you help us to prepare by knowing your word. We can pick out the counterfeits and see the lies and the fakes by knowing the truth. Help us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, I want to introduce what we're going to study in verses 13 and 14 by reading verse 12 where it says, Giving thanks unto the Father, uh, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. So the who in verse 13, the verse word in our, our text, the who there is the Father. God the Father hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of His dear Son. He has uh, delivered us from the power of darkness. That's why it's such a disgusting, pathetic thing to see so many Christians in darkness. He has delivered us from the power of darkness. But if you go put that uh, cloak of darkness back on yourself, mainly by ignorance, then you've got no one to blame but yourself. If you won't open your Bible and use a real Bible, the King James Bible, because you want to play stupid and act like you're too dumb to understand the King James Bible. I've not met a single person that's that stupid. So I don't care who you are, you're not that dumb. You don't need a watered-down baby Bible. You don't need that any more than you need your mommy 
to take and chew your food up and spit it back on your plate so you can eat it. <laughs> and that's, the, that's really what you're getting in an NIV or an ESV. You got some scholar chewing your food up and spitting it on a plate and it's just not the same thing. Anyone want to argue with me on that? I'll take you out and I'll buy the meal and I'll chew it up and spit it out and then let you eat it. <laughs> I've never had anybody take me up on that offer. It says, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness? Who? The Father. But it says, He's translated us into the kingdom of His Dear son, so the Father is the one who delivered. That's why He gets the praise. We praise the Father. We praise the Son. But we praise the Father because it's the Father who sent the Son. It's the Father who... And that's why we know that the Father is not Jesus. And Jesus is not the Father. We've got these spiritual infants out there teaching that nonsense. A lot of them on YouTube. But you'll find it all over the place. The whole apostolic movement tries to say Jesus is the Father and Father is Jesus. Uh, it's heretical. You're a heretic if you teach that nonsense. And you cause confusion. Because I see a baptism where Jesus is in the water being baptized and the Father speaks from heaven. You read what? Uh, what were we reading the other day, John? Was it uh, chapter 6? Where Jesus repeatedly refers to the Father as a separate person. And yet you're supposed to check your brain in and believe the nonsense that the Father and Jesus are the same. They're not. I and the Father are one. Say that with me. I and the Father are one. He didn't say they're the same. The Father delivered, and we are delivered. So that's why we should have joy. That's why we should be happy. We are delivered. Now, we are, you're stuck living out this life. You're stuck in that flesh. You're going to have problems with the flesh. You're going to have physical, you're going to have financial issues. You're going to have to put up with other people. <laughs> I mean, those are just some of the things you're stuck dealing with. But you, you can do that because you know that you are delivered. It's as good as done. You're delivered from what? Say it with me. You're delivered from the power of darkness. That means, again, as I said a moment ago, that if you are in darkness, you are the one to blame. God has delivered you. God has put His Spirit in you. God has given you truth. Uh, Doug and I have talked about this this week a couple of times, of how few Christians read through their Bible. And, they, and then they want well, to be surprised they don't know the Bible. How do, you, how do you expect to know the Bible if you don't read it? And then they attend a church where the, the pastor doesn't preach or teach the Bible. Uh, I don't know uh, what Doug mentioned yesterday, but I was, I was in the Free Will Baptist Church for a while and the Southern Baptist Church for a while. And these preachers would get up and they'd preach f uh, four points and a punt is what we used to call it. They'd be four points. And one, they'd all like either start with the same letter, yeah, or they would uh, have something in common. And it's a, uh, it's a memory technique. It's meant to do that. Here's the problem. You take someone who's attended a church like that after about 30 years, sit down and talk to them. They have, if they've attended church, let's just say every Sunday then they have attended church more than 1,500 times in 30 years. Ask them how many of those four-point sermons they remember. They aren't going to remember. They might be one or two. Then talk to them about the Bible. They aren't going to know the Bible. And some of you know what I'm saying because you've, you've experienced that You've talked to people who've been in those kind of churches and you know they don't know their Bible. You see what I'm saying? That's what's going on even in conservative churches and it's been going on my entire life. The reason why Christians, Christians, when I got saved, I just took for granted I could sit down with any Christian and sit down. I was you know, reading through the Bible because I thought that's what Christians do. And I'd sit down and I'd say, I'm in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, wherever I was. And I'd sit down and I'd say, yeah, I've been reading in Matthew. And you know that one part of it? We don't know. They're just like... 
They get this look on their face. Like, what are you talking about? They have, yeah, deer in a headlight look. That's good. And I was shocked that I could rarely ever find a Christian who could talk to me about the Bible intelligently. And some of them had been saved longer than I've been alive. Why? It's not just the church's fault, but that's where it starts with the fact they go to a church where it's not the Bible they teach, and then they don't read their Bible on their own. Uh, it, you get saved at the age of 20, and you read three chapters a day, then by the time you're 50 years old, you have read through the Bible 30 times. Very few Christians have read through the Bible once. Ain't that something? Yeah, Doug? Well, you know, about the audio, like I said, I couldn't do it for my vision, but the audio is still there. Yeah. We, we have given away MP3s, and uh, Janie got herself an audio CD set. And uh, Martha will enjoy this, but uh, if you listen to the audio Bible, you can go through the Bible, you know, just in about, what, 15 minutes a day at the most. 15 minutes and just listen to three chapters a day and you always have some jerk that's going to come up and say well you're not really reading the Bible I mean if you you really you know what I've told him Martha since we met you I used to just use a generic reference but now I'll say well you know what you gonna walk up to Martha and tell her she's not really reading the Bible Martha knows her Bible and you know how she reads it audio. She has a Braille Bible, but she uses audio. Now, I don't know anybody that stupid to walk up to Martha and tell her that. And if they did, Dan, Dan would bite them. But you know what? Like Doug said, you know, it isn't just the fact that it's there and people aren't doing it, but in a lot of churches, he'll tell you, they never told him that in the previous churches. No one mentioned it. Why? Because that's not their goal. The goal of the Laodicean churches isn't for you to know the Bible because then I'm out of job. I lose my pay and benefits. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Is they want, that's why they stand up here and say, Well, in the Greek, if you will go there, you will see that this is a very poor translation in your King James Bible. A better translation would be... <laughs> That's how they talk. You know why they talk like that? They want you to think you need them. I'm going to tell you what very few preachers are going to tell you today or any other day. You don't need me. You don't need a preacher. Now, we should be a blessing to you. God has called men to pastor to be a blessing to you. But if I just went... And just... what that's called when you just go up in flames? Huh? Yeah, spontaneously combust. Yeah, it'd be terrible. I wouldn't feel a thing. It'd be spontaneous. It'd be good. But you, if you have been doing what you're supposed to be doing, you're reading your Bible, you've been paying attention, you could get along without me. But if I convince you that you can't know your Bible unless you know Greek or Hebrew, and you don't know it, I do. In arche proston theon, you know, they're quoting, and oh, Greg's wonderful. And I've had people say that. I, I was going to a church one time, and a guy was preaching Calvinism, and I, there was an old fellow there, and um, I was like, I just, I don't buy that stuff. And he says, he looks at me like, you would do this, and you'd be joking. He was serious as could be. He looked at me and says, but Greg, he knows Greek. That was his answer. That's what people think. They have this thing that, ooh, our pastor went to seminary and he knows Greek and Hebrew. Therefore, listen, if you know English and you will read your King James Bible, you will know more than your Greek Hebrew professor. Because he's so caught up in his, with his nose in those stupid, fallible lexicons and critical texts, he don't know the Bible. I've talked to him. They don't know the Bible. 
You take some old drunk gets saved and, and stops, you know, throws the bottle away and starts reading the Bible, within a year he'll know more than most seminary graduates. Thank God. Why? Because we're, we're delivered from the power of darkness. Don't go find yourself a Greek or Hebrew seminarian who will put you back under it. And it says, speaking of translations, do you know you're a translation? You have been translated into the kingdom of His dear Son. You are a translation and, and when you finally get there, you'll be an infallible translation. <laughs> People will say, you got a paper pope. You know what you should say? Say, absolutely, and unlike your pope, mine's infallible. Amen. And the Father translated. We are translated. That's where we put ourselves in the right place and we understand we are translated into the kingdom of Jesus. It's all about Jesus. And it says here, in whom we have redemption. Verse 14. It says we have redemption. You're not earning it. You're not, uh, what, D uh, Dan, you brought this up yesterday. I'm going up on the rough side of the mountain. And I can't remember all the words. It's basically one of these days I'm going to get to the top, you know. And uh, that's how cr people like to think of that. You know, oh, I'm saved and now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this and I'm going to do that and I'm going to make my way. And, you know, no, you're all, if you're saved, you're saved. Really what you're doing now is basically trying to get through without losing. Not your salvation, but your reward. You're trying to get through this life without losing your reward. Not salvation. You want to get to the other side and have something to show for it. Amen? We are redeemed. The real you is redeemed. As pretty as some of the ladies here are today. And Mark and Doug. This, that body that you're in right now ain't the real you. The real you is inside. And when you get to heaven, your body will not be what it is right now. Oh yeah, we'll be recognized, but you're going to be glorified. And we've, we've read that in the last few weeks. And we're all going to hair, have hair like Jenny. And uh, white like wool. And we're all going to glow. We're going to be saints in light. And all that, we're going to have white robes on. And I will not spill coffee and stain it. It's going to be, I'm going to be a whole new me. Amen? I mean, I will have hair. Just that right there. It's going to make me look a lot different. But our bodies are waiting for that redemption. Turn over to Romans chapter 8. I quoted this to Sean a little while ago. I sit back there in that chair. And uh, when I got up, I wasn't acting. I got up and I, I said... Oh, and the older you get, boys, you may not feel it right now, Dorian. You may not feel it right now, Ramon. You may not feel it right now, Nick. But uh, the days are coming. We have to wake him up so he knows what I'm talking about. Well, he... <laughs> he's praying. He said, "In Jesus' name, Amen." Yeah. <laughs> I want you boys to look at this because this is your future. Beginning verse 21. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Now if you're saved, that's your future. But verse 22. This is the, the solid now. King James Bible preaching and teaching, along with the encouragement of the Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, tune in to our internet radio station available every day, 24 hours a day, at bbfohioradio.com. Join listeners from over 150 nations, all 50 U.S. states, and other U.S. territories who are tuning in and receiving free Bible teaching at bbfohioradio.com.